Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Lisa Wiedemann, an optometric physician for over 30 years. And I'm so happy to be here to provide the best ocular and visual health information that I can. And I would love for you to subscribe and um, join in and be able to watch um, as much content as I can put out. I would love for you to make comments uh, of different topics that you'd like to hear about on visual and ocular health. Tonight, I am live doing a video on floaters. And one of the reasons is it is one of the most common issues that I see. It is very often uh, something that people are get upset over when it happens. Uh, and it's really important to understand the background of what they are, when you need to be concerned about them, and what the potential treatment options are. So I'm going to, as best I can, show you uh, what floaters typically look like for many people. And they can appear as transparent threads, little dots, little cobwebs, little blobs that are suspended and float and move with your eye. And I'm gonna show you a little uh, video visual of that so that you can see really a good representation of how that looks of having a floater and how as you move your eye, you can kind of chase them around. And they are, yes, suspended right there inside and they are not up in front of your eye or on your eye. And I'm going to try to just give a good explanation here of really what they are and the vitreous is the gel that forms the shape of our eye, and it is what gives us that cushioning. It is what is holding the shape for our eyes to be moved by the muscles. 98% of it is water, but the other 2%, the collagen and the hyaluronic acid, make the consistency of the vitreous a about similar to raw egg white. And this is, I'm gonna go over to the next here, um, that as we age, this vitreous gel, it shrinks a bit. And there's sections that are in the gel that they start to liquefy. And it causes these collagen uh, fibers to sort of clump together. And that's what becomes visible threads and dots and webs in our vision. And yes, as soon as we shift our eyes, we can really kind of chase them around, but they are suspended and not moving uh, other than uh, with the motion of the eye. And this picture here gives a really good representation. So uh, the photo on the left you can see is showing these collagen clumped fibers suspended in there. And on the top on the right, you're actually seeing the shadow cast onto the back retina. That is that picture right there. And the shadows that you're seeing, it varies based on how close to the retina the floater is or how more maybe say central in the middle of the eye as to how clear or blurred these floaters are. And that bottom right photo, I put in there because that is showing you exactly what I see as the doctor putting a slit beam of light through inside the eye. And that's what uh, I see is the light beam hitting the uh, clumped collagen in there and shows me the floater that you have in your eye. Here's where floaters are of concern. And this is what you need to understand that if you typically have not had floaters and all of a sudden you have a whole shower of floaters uh, and it's accompanied by potentially also a loss of vision 
and also off into the periphery. And it would be really kind of far out, up, down, left, right. It looks as if a camera flash has gone off when there is no camera. And that is of concern. You need to see an eye doctor as quickly as you can, because we need to make sure that there isn't a retinal detachment happening. So here you can see the photo on the left is the normal vitreous filling the eye. In the center is a vitreous detachment. Remember how I said that vitreous as time goes on and we have more birthdays, the vitreous gel shrinks a bit and it can pull away from the retina. It can do so safely without damaging our vision and just cause a floater, typically a circular one called a Weiss ring um, in that type of situation of this type of floater from a PVD. Uh, but the caution here is that we need to have it checked when you have a new onset of floaters because in that third picture, you can see where the vitreous, as it pulled away from the retina, actually pulled and created a small hole and fluid from the vitreous can get down in through there and fill up and separate the retina and detach the retina, which can be treated with laser and surgical procedures, but it needs to be treated quickly before more of the retina detaches. So that is one of the things of very big caution to understand that for the most part, floaters are benign. There's no issue to it. Floaters are exceptionally common. And here, this is the statistic of one report is 76% of people have seen them in their eyes. It's much more common after the age of 50. And if you do experience a PVD, which is the safe benign type of vitreous just pulling away due to normal shrinkage with age, pulling away from the uh, back surface of the retina. Um, you can then get it also in the second eye, don't be surprised. But these floaters that are created, they range anywhere from just occasionally seeing it and kind of swatting it like you think you saw a bug and oops, that wasn't a bug, that was my floater every once in a while all the way up to a significant disruption in your ability to drive or read. Because if this aggregation of collagen is of a certain substantial size and is suspended in that central visual axis, really between where your pupil is and where the retina, if it is suspended in that area, it can be very obtrusive. It's not real common to have a very large uh, floater that is suspended there and stays there for a long time, but it does happen. So uh, the problem here is there's no products that can get rid of eye floaters, but we can manage them. And when I say no products, I'm talking about people who are looking for the eye drop or the vitamin, the answer to try to get rid of these things. And they're right now, I'll, I'll show you shortly uh, different options that are out there that you should be aware of. All right, so the treatment options for floaters and how are we realistically going to manage them? Because boy, they can be rather annoying and alarming if you've never had them before. The biggest thing that we eye doctors say when it is a benign, let's say a PVD type floater or just the aggregate collagen random floater in your vision, we ignore them. We observe observation, meaning we'll see what it looks like in six months or at your annual check. Um, and we wait because more often than not, they do get better on their own. And as I've written here, 95% of all floaters will improve without any sort of treatment or management at all on our part within about six months. So that's the good news. Neuroadaptation is a process that happens for partially of us not noticing them as much because our brain can adapt to seeing a 
certain, um, let's say, obstruction in the vision, and it fills it in as if it's not there. And that's a type of neuroadaptation that the brain actually learns to ignore something like um, a small floater. Now for the more obtrusive ones that really do change your quality of life, where people who have a floater that is large enough that it really is disruptive and over some time it is still not going away. So there is a laser procedure that can be done and it's called vitriolysis and it is done right in the office and it shows about a 40 to 50% chance of improvement. 7.7% .7 actually got worse though. There are risks involved, uh, retinal tear, retinal detachment, an increased spike in the intraocular pressure uh, or cataracts if the surgeon uh, goes too far uh, with that laser beam or um, too close to the lens. And I'm gonna show you uh, a pretty interesting demonstration of the laser and how it actually, it's, it's really almost like a video game, zapping that floater that's in there. And you can see it causes it to dissipate. And the benefit of that obviously is that a very large suspended uh, floater can be broken apart. Sometimes it takes multiple visits, but this procedure that's done right there from start to finish, about 15 minutes from the whole numb the eye, put on a special little contact lens, um, do the laser procedure. Uh, it, it's very simple, painless. And uh, again, it might need a couple visits to come back in and uh, get some others that might not be in the visual axis where the surgeon is able to get it. But uh, for the most part, the, the issue with that is there are risks. Not every um, surgeon will recommend this and you might have to seek one out uh, because there are um, certain, you know, it's, it's fairly new. There's no long-term safety data on it, but it is really effective for people who, and like I, have really been trying to explain on the severity level of this, you really have to have a certain, you, you need to be a candidate for it. If you're just getting occasional floaters and you're like, oh, so annoying, you're not coming in for this procedure. This has to be something where you're, you're really, your quality of life has uh, been altered. Uh, and the next surgical intervention for floaters is a vitrectomy, which has been done for much longer, uh, but much more invasive. It is actually done in a surgical suite, as you can see there. And the vitreous gel in its entirety is removed. There are surgical instruments inserted into the eye and that vitreous gel along with the floaters, of course, go out and it's replaced with a replacement fluid uh, to, of course, hold the shape of the eye. So there is a really good, when you see up there, 90% of patients were satisfied after the vitrectomy, but <laughs> here's the catch. The, uh, doesn't guarantee that the uh, eye floaters are not going to come back. Uh, and there's always risks involved. For someone who has not had cataract surgery yet, who opts to have this vitrectomy for removal of the floaters, um, you have about a 30% increased risk of forming a cataract just from the procedure. Uh, and then all those other risks listed, retinal detachment, retinal tear, a vitreous hemorrhage, a glaucoma, or a serious infection related to this, only about 2% risk for that. So relatively safe, really effective, but again, you're not going in for this procedure if you have just that a little annoying uh, thing that looks like a gnat floating by your vision. All right, now, this slide got messed up. I don't know why or how. It wasn't messed up on my screen before, but supplements, nutritional supplements. You are going to see these, why? Because there's always somebody who is selling something. And look at that title, Vitreous Health. 
eye floaters formula. It sounds so good, doesn't it? Uh, but as we can see here, and uh, <laughs> we can look, uh, it's there's it on that top right there. There's a fly study, um, and it it's only one study. It's very small subjects. There's only 31 subjects in the study, uh, but their study determined that it was beneficial compared to a placebo. So I have put this here and dedicating uh, some talk about it because. You know, if somebody really is not ready to jump into one of those surgical interventions and has a significant enough of a floater where it really is quite bothersome, I'm not so sure that it doesn't hurt to at least maybe give this a try, uh, read the study and look for yourself and decide if you feel like it's something that might be worthwhile to try. The next slide if you have researched into floaters, you will have seen and heard about pineapple, the pineapple cure, because of the enzyme bromelain that is in a higher concentration in pineapple. And it's thought to break down collagen in the vitreous, which of course we're talking about these collagen fibers um, and, and with the benefit then of decreasing the appearance of floaters. But there's only been one study and it has not been replicated by any other researchers. And my thought is, heck, if it's breaking down the collagen in your eye, and that's the point and the purpose of this bromelain, why are we to think it's not breaking down the collagen in our skin and our cartilage and our muscles? Because in the study, it depends, there's different parts of the study where they talk about the amount of pineapple that uh, needs to be ingested how many times a day. And then to that, if you know me, I am a big proponent of not overloading our systems with fruit or glucose, fructose and sucrose that I feel do not belong in our bodies. So I don't think it, for me, totally a no go on the pineapple cure attempt uh, because of the detriment it's going to do to your insulin and your glucose. So, but you can take that for what it's worth on, on that. And uh, being on the subject of eating and what I always like to get to is root cause. I, uh, if you know me from my other channel, Carnivore Doctor, I have done a lot of discussion with positive changes that have happened because of when people have changed to a keto or keto carnivore-ish type way of eating. Um, and I have people who write in with positive effects that have happened to their vision, to their eyes, to different eye diseases that they've had by changing the way they eat. And this particular person said, after six months of carnivore, they had a large island of floaters that had been messing with their vision and it just disappeared. So... I'm always, always going to be one uh, of a big proponent of saying eliminate processed foods, eliminate all seed oils, and eliminate grains and sugars, and you'll bot your body wants to heal. We're here to evolve. So I like to, at least at a minimum, try to use that also as a way of having our body do what it's supposed to do, which is it's going, it, our body wants to heal and evolve to health. And if we allow it and remove the toxic garbage food that we've been putting in our body for decades, we have a really much, much better chance of achieving full health. So, all right. Thank you so much for joining into this video. And of course, it helps me for you to subscribe and share the video. And if you would, in the comments, I would love to hear any sp specific topics. Uh, I know I'm going to do, um, I have so many on my list that I am lining up to do. I've had so many ask about dry eye, cataracts, macular pucker, um, so, so, so many. So um, I am also going to go over and uh, to those of you who have joined me tonight, um, see if I can answer a couple questions. Uh, let's see. Let's. I'm going to pull over 
So I've had that now. I got a steroid shot. So I guess since you got a steroid shot, you've had floaters. I've been seeing them lately. Should I be concerned? So like I've said in that video, in, in this video tonight, if it's not a whole shower of them, it's not something that's causing any change in your vision. You're not seeing any flashing lights. It's more than likely just a simple random floater. Uh, I would contact your eye doctor though, just to have them double check, make sure there is no little tiny hole or tear uh, that it could be any sort of potential problem. It's better safe than sorry. Just kind of always look at it to get that kind of thing checked. Um, let's keep going here off topic a bit. I had a detached retina and the subsequent surgeries. And now that lens is a cataract. My question is, I have been on a weight stall since I've been consistent on ketovore. Yeah, I got to say more than likely not directly related. I would, um, I would tend to think that, yeah, there's so many other factors that could contribute to weight loss stalls that we're not going to blame it on our eyes. Okay. I've always had floaters and detached vitreous in both eyes and the calcium rings. Yeah. So again, really, really common. I myself have had floaters. I remember in my early 20s, Looking at a blue sky, because a blue sky, the wavelength of blue makes floaters much more prominent and a plain background, I would chase this floater around. I could draw it on the paper, the shape of it. It was an armless uh, stick figure. And so it's, it's just so common to have them. I have not had a detached uh, vitreous, but um, it's, you know, we, they become our little friends. Some people name, name them <laughs> as they pass by. Um, Okay, and I have a question here. How is this related to axial length? Great question because uh, a added risk factor for having floaters and a PVD, the posterior vitreous detachment, is nearsightedness. And nearsighted people have a slightly longer axial length, meaning just a longer from front to rear measurement of their eye. And when you have that vitreous gel that now needs to take up more of a space because the eye is longer, um, there's a chance that it will pull away. So at added risk for a PVD. And is taking a collagen supplement contraindicated with floaters? I would not say at all contraindicated. You taking a collagen supplement for the benefit of, let's say your joints, your muscles, your hair, whatever your particular reason why you might be taking a collagen supplement is not going to infuse into the eye and say, hey, collagen in there, let's kick it up and start um, you know, clumping together and causing a floater. I, I really do not think at all that would be an issue. So, uh, Let's see. Love, would love a video on diabetic retinopathy for sure, Sandra. I am definitely going to do that. Um, there's so much really, there's so much important information for diabetics um, beyond just the retinopathy uh, as far as for the type twos who are often told that they will be diabetic for the rest of their life and that it's not reversible and they'll be on medication the rest of their life. And that is the farthest from the truth. And I am so much a proponent to get that message out of how to reverse diabetes. And you can even reverse early stage um, diabetic retinopathy. So that's the good news. So, all right, I'm going to end it here. Thank you so much for joining in. I'm going to see um, if I can consistently get these videos out with the information that you all want. And I hope to see you next time. Thanks again for joining.